Good morning, this is Nate Perrin, pastor of Valon Friends Church. Uh, this is going to be the last video or devotional uh, for this series. We're still going to be recording sermons. Um, so uh, if you want to uh, continue doing these uh, devotionals or Bible studies, uh, we're working on a way to uh, do outreach to the new crowd we've been um, reaching. Um, some are all over Wisconsin, others are, you know, scattered everywhere from Kansas to Ohio to uh, even some California. Uh, we're thinking about doing a um, Zoom Bible study that's still up in the air, though. Uh, but uh, these videos, the devotionals themselves, will not uh, be recorded. But if you would like one of these books, they're available at Barclay Press, or you can uh, contact the church Facebook page. Um, we'll be happy to give one to you. Uh, it's also going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how things are going to be once they open up. So let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Uh, dear Lord, uh, we thank you for this time together. Uh, I pray for peace and mercy for us all. Um, just give us a sense of comfort and wisdom, um, and this, uh, These passages they have selected for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so the first passage is going to be Matthew 5, uh, 17 through 30. These pages stick together. And then Matthew 5, 33 through 48. Uh, this is on page 110. Um, I'm only going to be reading verses 17 through 18 on Matthew 5, 17 through 30. And then verses 29 through 30. Uh, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, but I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. For I truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. And jump to verse 29. Uh, if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go to hell. Hooray! All right, so Matthew 5, 33 through 48. Um, let's see. These are pretty much a summation of the Torah, what the heart of it is. Uh, I'll read a few verses. I'll read verses 33 three, uh, through 35. And then verse 34 through 39. So again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall swear falsely. But carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I swear, but blah, blah, blah. I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is by the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is His footstool, or by Jerusalem, uh, for it is the city of the great King. <clears throat> Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone uh, who wants to borrow from you. You have heard it said it, that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you really have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. If you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. All right, so uh, sorry to report that uh, there's been a lot of, um, in the past, anti-Semitism that uh, people uh, have tried to glean from uh, the Gospels. Um, I don't think it's there, but if you don't know the context, it could come off like that. 
Uh, Matthew is a very Jewish gospel. Um, what he, Jesus is saying is that uh, God was present in the law in the Old Testament, uh, but that Jesus was coming to fulfill it. So what does that fulfillment look like? Um, he is trying to get people to stop thinking of sin as an outer condition and more of an inner condition. Uh, if you say you uh, hate your neighbor, Jesus says that's like committing murder in your heart, right? Um, if you gossip or spread things about your neighbor or brother or sister in Christ, uh, you... You are in that same position as someone who's being, uh, you know, murderer. You know, it's, I think this was pretty straightforward. Uh, obviously, this is not, 29 through 30 is not meant to be taken absolutely literally. Uh, please don't cut off your hand. Don't pluck out your eye. Um, don't, the inner condition is what matters the most. And when you connect to Christ, that condition begins to form over time. So, um, yeah, whatever is tempting you to do these things, remove it. That's what it's basically saying. Of course, your hand is in, like, an inanimate object. I think I saw a weird horror movie. Uh, it was black and white. I think it was a Twilight Zone episode about a hand that had its own mind. It, it was weird. But, um, you know, it, it, Jesus was using language of metaphor to communicate these truths. All right, let's go ahead and jump to the other passage. Um, <clears throat> so there were rabbis around this time who were uh, <coughs> considered the religious, religious authorities. And religious authorities for uh, ancient Hebrews that carried a lot more weight than it does today. And it's very common to hear rabbis say, no, no, it's okay to not forgive your enemies. Uh, it's okay to hate people. Now, that was a pretty common thing for them to uh, espouse. Uh, so when Jesus says, you have heard it said that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, he's not quoting scripture. He's quoting those rabbis. Uh, you know, so Jesus is uh, making a kingdom contrast. Uh, <clears throat> I hate to use the word uh, religion. Because when I read uh, scriptures, Paul says there's good religion and bad religion. I just don't know what else word, uh, what other word to use at this point. So here's the religion of uh, the rabbis. Here's the kingdom. Um, Jesus is saying that if you want to be part of the kingdom, uh, you have to pray for your enemies. You have to uh, love and uh, those who are persecuting you. Um, and, uh, let's look at verse 46. For if you love those who love you, or or do you have, do not even the tax collectors do the same. So tax collectors, it's not like the IRS. Tax collectors are pretty bad people, um, in the first century. Uh, they would often take way more than they intended, than, uh, what was needed. And they would make sure to plunge that family into absolute poverty. They're part of the system where um, uh, that the Romans used to keep the Hebrews in place. So Jesus is saying, look at that tax collector. Even he loves his friends and hates his enemies. How is he different? <clears throat> so if we're going to be kingdom people, uh, we need to switch our mindset from... Uh, this common uh, small g gospel, I guess, that we hear that uh, we need to be only loving the people we like. The capital G gospel we need to be following is that we pray for those who persecute us. We pray uh, for the um, for God to deal with them uh, as he see fits. We need to be praying um, that we have the courage to love. And it does take courage. Um, I had my last class uh, on Monday. And uh, as a, the guest speaker was this 90-year-old uh, activist. Uh, he was a black pastor named John Perkins. Um, if you've never heard of him before, he's just this got this incredible story. Um, 
he uh, dropped out of third grade, um, and he uh, saw his own brother get killed. Um, yeah, just an intense story. And um, in jail, after he was beaten several times um, for, you know, being uh, part of a protest, um, he said to himself, I'm going to, God, give me um, the kind of gospel that helps me to forgive these people. And uh, one of the words he, um, one of the phrases he used during this class, he said, we need a gospel that can preach to maggots like us. And he wasn't using the word maggots. Um, that's kind of like a racial term. He's saying, we are so deep in sin, we need Jesus. Um, we need Jesus to forgive the people that hurt us the most. Um, just a phenomenal, phenomenal story. But the world will always be telling us we need to only love our friends, right? We need to only hang out with people who uh, act like us, speak like us. Uh, but we dread of doing anything other than uh, talking with the other. Um, the kingdom way is to eat love to the extreme so much so that you love even your enemies. And that's a hard thing to do. I'm not speak. I just hate it when <laughs> pastors make it sound like this is something they got down. I don't know a single pastor who has it down. Um, um, it's just one of those things where we have to be intentional. For part of the kingdom of God, we gotta love. Um, and every time I, um, well, this is the way it used to be. Uh, back when I was, uh, you know, first starting as a Christian. Um, Every time these passages would be highlighted, uh, someone would be quick to, I want to say juxtapose, uh, what kind of, what's a better word? Contrast. There we go. They would say contrast as like, we're supposed to love, but we're supposed to do this, but, and I think that's kind of, um, an unhealthy mindset. Does that make sense? Um, we're supposed to love, but call out sin. Yeah, I get, I agree with the statement of that. But I think that also gives us a temptation um, to treat people more as projects. Does that make sense? Um, whenever I'm working with anyone, um, I don't see uh, them as projects. Believe it or not, I rarely. My most successful outreach has never been viewing people as projects, as being my own little to-do list. It's always just been through friendship and loving them. Um, I think that's why outreach is so as poor as it is today, honestly, because we've been given this model that says, oh, you have uh, a non-Christian friend. You better uh, treat them as if they're uh, this unique project that you need to finish. As entirely a God thing, but through love, God opens up that space for dialogue. He always opens up that space for conversation. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, uh, I always hear, um, people, uh, treat their, uh, non-Christian friends, uh, that way. Um, I always hear about it for some reason. Um, and this is a mindset that's pretty common, so it's not uh, anything I necessarily judge. But um, I know when I wasn't a Christian, I could tell from a mile away when a Christian was trying to convert me. Um, it was only when I experienced radical love that I was able to meet Jesus. Uh, I guess I have that kind of uh, privilege um, to have been... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you'll call it, backslidden, or, uh, well, at one point I was a flat-out atheist. So, um, I guess I have, uh, had that privilege, uh, if you want to call it that, to see things from the other side. And, um, I think we treat outreach to be something a lot more complicated than it actually is, to be honest. Um, 
one of my uh, first uh, people I led to the Lord, or God led to himself, whatever you want to say. I don't use theologically appropriate language, I know, uh, sue me. But <laughs> um, I was actually uh, out reading on the patio. I remember the book I was reading, because uh, this is like this is what makes it unusual. I was reading um, The Stand by Stephen King. Um, it's still one of my favorite novels. I can't recommend it as a pastor, but, you know. Um, I was reading that book, and this guy just came up to me. And we started making small chat, and uh, something in my heart just uh, um, led me to ask him. And it's like, where are your thoughts about God? Where are your thoughts about this and this? And he became a Christian about an hour later. Um, it wasn't something... Uh, where I closed my book immediately and I said, oh, evangelism opportunity. It was something that just getting to know him and loving him, where he was at. Um, he had a lot of uh, mess on his plate. But, uh, yeah, that's just the way we treat people. We got to be perfect as God is perfect is to live in love. It's to be sanctified over time, too. But that sanctification looks <clears throat> a whole lot like the cross. It looks a whole lot like love. It doesn't look like uh, one day we stop cussing, one day we stop chewing tobacco, or tobacco. <laughs> I'm from Kansas, sorry. It looks like living in love, and to love is to be obedient, and to love is to be holy. Um, don't treat people as your projects. Don't um, live in such a radical way that just screams Jesus. And what screams Jesus to you may not scream Jesus to other people at first. But trust me, they'll eventually get it. Um, I got to shut up now at 17 minutes. Um, uh, for those who are in person at the local Bible study, I will not be able to attend. Um, I sh My hours shifted again at the Boys and Girls Club, but um, I'll be happy to drop by whenever I can. Uh, miss y'all. Um, I hope you've, uh, you know, found these at least somewhat educational, if not entertaining, as I try to piece together stuff. Um, yeah, I'll be keeping y'all in prayer. Um, for those who uh, are keeping track uh, through YouTube or Facebook, um, hopefully we're going to find a way to connect to you all. But in the meantime, I'll be continuing engaging you in conversation. Um, I thank you so much for listening. Uh, I know this is not the ideal background for a lot of people, but uh, apparently I've gotten no complaints. So I guess there's a lot of Clash fans out there, huh? Um, I pray you uh, peace and a uh, sense of uh, health during all this. And that you always remember that uh, we as Valentine Friends are here for you, uh, no matter who you are. And that um, the last thing we would want for you to feel or to sense is that we're not of service to you, so please uh, reach out if you need help. Um, you know, just thank you so much for uh, tuning in and stuff. I'll be closing in prayer, and I'll be uh, logging off. Um, I think we need to get some lunch. <laughs> All right. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for this time together. Um, during this time of... Uh, for lack of a better word, uh, chaos, uh, let us see you. And Lord, as we approach your throne, tell us what the response is. Tell us how we should listen. Uh, keep us all safe and uh, keep our eyes on you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, grace and peace. I'll uh, see you all later.